Good morning, Year 3 and Year 4. It's lovely to see you today. Well done on some great learning yesterday. Before we get started reading the next chapter of The Secret Lake, let's warm up our brains with our starter activity. Your challenge today is to see how many characters you can remember from the story so far. So pause the video here and have a go at writing them down. Good luck! How many of the characters did you remember? There's Tom and Stella, Hannah, Stella's best friend in Hong Kong. Uh, there is Charlie, the gardener, Harry, the dog who keeps escaping, Mrs Moon, his owner, um, Tom and Stella's mother, and you may have even mentioned the moles. In the other world, there is Jack, the boy on the lake, Crawley, the gardener, Sophie and Emma, the sisters, who they meet, Mrs Gladstone, their mother, and Miss Walker, the governess. OK, let's read the next chapter of The Secret Lake. We're on chapter 7, and it's called The Time Tunnelers. And yesterday we left the story at the point where Tom and Stella had just met Emma and Sophie, and they were pretending to be her cousins from Australia. I wonder what will happen next? Chapter 7. The Time Tunnelers. The moment they were out of sight, Tom turned on Stella. Tears of frustration clouded his eyes. That is our house, he said crossly. Why did you go and say we live in Australia? I'm going to tell Mum. He lurched forward as quickly as Stella tucked him back. Tom, listen, she said firmly. You're forgetting something, aren't you? The lake? The hole we climbed down? Don't you see? Tom looked bewildered. Stella paused, trying to think of how to make him understand. She took in a deep breath. Tom, look, I do think that is our house. But, well, not at the moment. Look, don't ask me how, but that tunnel we found seems to have taken us back to our garden in past time. That's why everyone's wearing those funny clothes. You're bonkers said Tom. No, I'm not, said Stella. I think the boat you dug up in our garden came from this time. I think it's the one we rode across the lake on today. Our garden must have had a lake that dried up. Tom, who had started chipping with his trowel at the bark of the tree, stopped what he was doing and slowly turned to Stella. Wow, he said brightly, his brown eyes almost doubled in size. We're really in the past. That's so cool. He then gave his big sister the biggest of grins. Stella, who was thinking what a fantastic adventure this was, put her arm around Tom and kissed his cheek. Come on, let's go home. We'll come back another time. Moments later, they were heading back through the woods towards the lake sucking on fruit polos and laughing about the ladies' ridiculous long skirts. I wonder what happened to Harry, said Tom, as they retraced their path. I wonder where that boy we saw's gone, said Stella. He must be the thief. And she sucked thoughtfully on her sweet. To Stella's relief, the little boat was still there when they emerged onto the lake bank. Tom sat opposite her, peering towards the far side through his binoculars as she rowed them back. He was starting to feel hungry, and they had left their lunch boxes by the log up on the mound. You first, said Stella. They stood at the foot of the tree they had come down. Stella gave Tom a leg up, and he quickly grasped onto a nodule and started climbing. Stella followed him up into the shade of the vast branches. Where are you two going? They after you do, bellowed a voice from below. Stella was so startled she nearly lost her footing. Clinging on tightly, she looked down to see the scruffy young boy staring up at her. Keep going, Tom, she called, glancing back up. It's the boy who stole the silver. They'll be coming for him. Immediately, Tom started scrambling more quickly up through the dense branches above. Stella quickly followed. Higher and higher they went all the time expecting the darkness to envelop them. But the tunnel didn't appear. All they could see was clear blue sky filtering through the last remaining branches above. 
Stella's heart sank. Tom, the tunnel's not here. We'd better go down, she called, trying to sound, trying not to sound scared. Thud. Stella landed beside the boy who was sitting with his back up against the side of the tree. Thud. Down came Tom, binoculars, trowel and all. So, said the boy smiling, looks like, likes we're all in trouble. He paused briefly as he looked them up and down. Then he pulled the funniest of faces. What them outfits you're wearing then? You from a circus or what? We're not in any trouble, thanks. You are, said Stella sharply. She didn't trust the thief one little bit and clung tightly to her iPhone in case he tried to steal it. I'm hungry, said Tom. I wish we'd bought our lunch boxes, Stell. Here you go, lad. The boy reached into a paper bag beside him and held out a large hunk of white bread. How do we know that's not poisonous, said Stella. You're a thief after all. They told us all about you in the garden. The boy sighed. I never stole nothing. Yes, you did, said Stella. You took some silver. It's lucky they didn't arrest us. The boy slowly shook his head. It ain't true, he said wearily. Stella frowned at him suspiciously. Look, sit down, will you? And let that boy have something to eat. There's loads here and we ain't going nowhere till the sun goes down. I'm Jack, by the way. Nice to meet you. Despite what she'd heard, Stella couldn't help liking Jack after all. He had a warm smile and friendly brown eyes, and most importantly, he concern seemed to be concerned about Tom. Soon, they were all chewing on the soft white bread and listening to the chatter of the birds in the trees. So why do they say you stole something if you didn't, asked Stella. Jack shook his head slowly, then started to explain. How his father, Jacob, had been one of the builders of the houses in the garden and afterwards did regular building work for the Gladstones and the other houses in the garden. How one day, after some silver went missing in the house, he was falsely accused of stealing by one of the servants and sent to jail. How he was now free, but was a broken man with no one to recommend him and without any of his work tools which he'd kept in the Gladstone cellar. Finally, how he, Jack, had snuck into the house to try and retrieve his father's tools to help him. Pa lives for his work, said Jack, and without it, I don't think he'll go on much longer. He'll die of a broken mind or else hunger, that's for sure. And if it ain't that, we'll all end up in the workhouse, and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. The children sat in silence. Stella held her knees and stared at the ground. She felt terrible for having called Jack a thief. Anyways, Jack went on, that's when I sees Crawley stealing silver from the Gladstones. Tom frowned suspiciously. That horrid man we met in the garden? You saw Tr Crawley take the silver, said Stella. Sure as I can be, said Jack. See, I'd, I'd snuck into the kitchen through the garden door to get to the cellar when I heard someone coming. So I slips up the back stairs and immediately spots Crawley acting funny coming from one of the rooms. Looked like he was carrying summit under his jacket. He never saw me, but he disappeared right quick down to the garden. Saw him with me own eyes from the balcony window up there. Jack described how he'd gone to look for Crawley in the garden and how within minutes Half the household was chasing across the garden and calling him thief. How did you manage to escape? asked Tom, his eyes widening. Jack started to smile. Now there's a story. I was running towards the trees when all of a sudden I sees the moles me pa told me about. And I swear it was just that moment when the folks stopped chasing me. They thought they'd lost me. But I weren't that far ahead. That's why I decided to row over just to be on the safe side. Moles? What do moles have to do with anything? said Stella, frowning. I'm not sure, said Jack, but I know stay special. He sat up straight and smiled proudly. It was Pa who discovered him on the first day they set to preparing yon land for building. Whole place was shrouded in mist, 
Then out of the blue, he sees those moles, these moles scuttling in a circle, not 50 feet away, near a group of trees. Tom and Stella stared at Jack in astonishment. Jack went on. Of course, when Pa told everyone else, they all said he was mad. Moles don't come out in the daylight and all, and they certainly don't run around in circles neither. Everyone made a joke of it, but he knew they meant something special. Carried on seeing him right up to when Gladstone threw him out. Jack, I've seen the moles too, said Stella excitedly. I saw them through Tom's binoculars when we came down the tree. I thought I was imagining it. And I saw them in the garden, in our garden, when we first went looking for Harry, chipped in Tom. And just before we found the tunnel, tunnel I thought I was dreaming, Stell. Jack looked confused. Your garden? A tunnel? What are you talking about? Stella hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath. She somehow knew she could, that she could trust Jack. It's a bit hard to explain, Jack, she said, and I don't really understand what's happened. But, well, you see, Tom and I, we're not from this time. We're from a time in the future, the next century, actually, and we live in the Gladstones' house there. Jack opened his mouth to say something, but the words carried on tumbling out of Stella's. Oh, except it, it's not one house anymore. It's been divided into flats and we live on the lower ground and raised ground floors. But we do still have the same shared gardens, minus this lake, that is. It's all dried up in our time. She gave Jack a very broad grin, hoping it would help ease the shock. You kidding me or what, said Jack with a look of disbelief. Stell's telling the truth, said Tom eagerly. And when we were looking for our neighbour's dog, we found a tunnel with a ladder that brought us here. And just before that, I saw some moles. Jack sat shaking his head. Hey, I wonder if the moles make the tunnel appear, said Stella suddenly. Actually, that makes sense, doesn't it? Moles tunnel holes, don't they? Your father must be right, Jack. They are special. Jeepers, said Jack, smiling and shaking his head. Ain't nothing gonna surprise me no more after this. Nippers travelling back through a time tunnel and all. Can't wait to see Pa's face when I tell him this. Tom was beaming from ear to ear, but Stella was suddenly looking serious. She shifted awkwardly where she sat. There is one slight problem, though, she said. The tunnels disappeared. That's why we came back down. She pushed her hair behind her ears and studied her feet. I suppose we'll just have to wait for the moles to appear again to make it come back, don't you think? In fact, Stella was terrified that the moles would never return and that she and Tom would be stuck in the past forever, but she wasn't going to let that on. Must be, said Jack quickly, must be. He seemed to sense her fear. And seeing them moles looked after me, I'm sure they'll look after you too. Anyways, I'll wait with you both till they come. I ain't going back over there in no hurry. Stella, relieved, began smiling. Jack leaned towards her, peering at her iPhone. So, while we's waiting, what's that thing hanging out your pocket then? Here, try it. Stella switched on some music and passed it over. As she placed the earphones into Jack's ears, his smudge brown face expanded with delight. Jeepers, he shouted. You people in it. You got people in here or what? How'd you do that then? His eyes grew wider and wider in disbelief as his mouth fell wide open. And as the sun finally set behind the trees, Stella and Tom fell about in fits of laughter. I hope you enjoyed the chapter today. Now for our task, we are going to learn how to write a summary of the chapter that we've just read. I'm going to model how to do this using the very first chapter of the book and then you are going to have a go using the chapter we've just read, chapter seven. Now, a summary is when we tell the reader what has happened without giving lots of details. We're just going to tell the reader the main events. 
And a good way to do this is to think about the chapter that we've read in sections. Think about what happens at the beginning of the chapter, what happens in the middle of the chapter, and what happens at the end of the chapter. Okay, let's have a go. Looking back at chapter one, I can see that in the beginning we're introduced to Tom, the main character who likes digging in the garden. We also meet Charlie, the gardener, who isn't very friendly, and we can see that from his piercing stare. He's always um, telling uh, Tom off um, he doesn't want him in the garden. Um, Tom, uh, then towards the middle of the chapter, packs up his things and goes home. We then um, get to another part, important part where he goes to his bedroom and this is important in the chapter because we find out that he has moved um, from Hong Kong and also the room um, is important because it looks out over the garden where he's just been and the garden is a really important part of the story um, because who does he see racing across the garden? He sees Harry the dog. Um, at the end of the chapter, we get introduced to Stella, um, his sister, another main character, and the chapter ends with Tom wondering about Harry and where he is going, and he really wants to solve the mystery. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to turn the information that we've just discovered into a summary. So the first thing I've done is I have written my date, Tuesday the 23rd of June 2020, and my learning objective to write a summary. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just jot down those few ideas that um, I discovered whilst reading the rereading chapter one. So I, um, we found out it was Tom, he was in the garden and he was digging. Um, he, uh, he meets Charlie, the gardener. Um, he gets told off. So he, um, he goes home was important. Um, the next important thing was um, he goes to his bedroom and he looks out of the window and we said that he sees Harry dog and the chapter ends with him thinking about where is Harry going. So these were my key events. I don't need to question mark there. I now need to put them into some sensible sentences to explain to the reader what happens in the chapter without giving them lots and lots of details, just the main events. So I think I'm going to start um, by telling the reader who the main characters are that I am introduced to as it's the beginning of the story. So I'm going to say in chapter one, we are introduced to the main characters Tom, and I'm going to put Stella in here as well because she is his sister. Okay, and then if you remember I said it was a good idea to think about um, writing a summary by thinking about the beginning, the middle and the end of the chapter. So I'm going to say what happens at the beginning of my chapter first. So at the beginning... Um, Tom, where is Tom? Tom is in the garden and what's he doing? He's digging 
And what's he digging for? He's digging for treasure. Okay. There we go. In chapter one, we were introduced to the main characters, Tom and Stella. At the beginning, Tom is in the garden digging for treasure. Okay. Then what happens? Well, what happens next is that he meets Charlie the gardener. So that will make a good sentence. So then uh, Tom meets Charlie the gardener. Um, and gets told off. As Charlie's not very happy with him. Um, so what does Tom do next? What's the next main event? Well, we said here that he goes home. So in the middle part of the chapter, he goes home and he goes to his bedroom and looks out of the window. So that will be my next important thing to mention. So I'll say next, um, Tom goes home and um, into his bedroom. Um, he looks out of the window um, into the garden and that's important because what does he see? He sees Harry the dog racing across the lawn. So he looks out of the window into the garden and sees Harry the dog racing across the lawn. That's very important. Harry is a very important character in the story, isn't he? Because he's always disappearing. Um, and then the last thing I need to do is I've done the beginning and the middle. I need to talk about the end of the chapter. The last thing that happens is that we leave chapter one where Tom is wondering where Harry is going. So I think my um, last sentence will say at the end of the chapter um, Tom wonders where Harry um, is going and he wants to find out. There we go. So there we have a summary for chapter one, telling the reader the main events without all the extra details. You also notice that I've only written about six sentences altogether. So we don't need that many sentences to write our summary. Now it's your turn to have a go at writing a summary for chapter seven. So have a look back through the video and play the story again and note down what the key events are. Good luck and I look forward to reading your summaries later.